Okay, here I'm going to talk about one of the most exciting um, new features of FME Server 2012. And that's all about um, FME Server in a real-time environment, um, being able to process real-time data, and um, the things we've done to make it much easier for FME Server to integrate into other um, workflows. Okay, so really um, what we're talking about here is all the work we've done to make FME 2012 Server um, a real-time uh, data processing, data transformation product. Um, prior to FME 2012, um, FME Server was uh, much more of a batch environment. You could uh, upload data, um, transform it, get data back. The point was is that each task had to be triggered by a person. It, um, you could tr it, triggering it by an application was very difficult. And so what we've done is with the with the uh, the amount of real-time uh, data growing out there, we spent a great deal of effort to build a real-time architecture for FME Server so that it's able to um, process data in real time. So there's a number of things we did. Okay, the first thing we did is we looked at existing workflows and we said, how can we make those better? How can we make it easier for people to work th um, with them? And uh, so we made it much easier to uh, for people to work with with data on the web. We um, We've um, become aware that more and more data is actually living on the web, so people can um, search for data on the web, uh, download it, and then process it. Well, the question is, why should they have to download it? Why can't they just process it directly? So that's what we did for FME uh, 2012. Okay, so users would find data on the, on the web. They would have to download it. Then, of course, they would have to push it up to the server themselves, then trigger the job on the server, and then after they uploaded it and then they would get the results so that's very time consuming very manual very uh, labor intensive and uh, you're not going to you know automate that if you're looking for many different files on the web you're going to have to to do this over and over again so we looked at this and said well there's a better way so one of the things we did for FME 2012 was now if somebody if you find data on the web you simply give that URL to the FME server and the FME server does all the work so now you don't have to download it you simply give that URL to server and uh, it does the work so that's the first thing we did we added the ability for FME server to be passed a URL and then it will go get it and we did that with a very simple option you can see in the in the dialogue there um, there's an option opt to get URL and then you specify the URL where the data go, uh, lives FME goes and gets it runs the workspace just as it would before and uh, gives you back the result of that workspace so 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 that's huge that really makes it easy you're working on the web you find data on the web you want to use it you no longer have to download it just point FME server at it and away it goes okay but that's not good enough okay um, another thing we found with people is they would have data on their local desktop or on as part of an, an application and they wanted to trigger a workspace via URL to process the data well before they would have to again go through this whole thing of saving that data to a file uploading the file running the workspace to get it back so now what we've done is we've changed it so that through a single HTTP post call, you can post data to uh, FME again with a URL like you everybody's familiar with. It has a workspace in the uh, in the URL. What FME Server is now going to do is grab that post body, save it in a file, and pass it to a workspace as the source data set. So, so, so that's really exciting. What this enables you to do is easily now publish an FME workspace and use it as a transformation service. So we have a simple one here um, in the, in, in, on the slide here uh, just to illustrate the point. Um, in this case, the, uh, the scenario is a user simply stores geometry as a WKT, well-known text and then post that to uh, the uh, the FME server, invoking this workspace here that does a buffer. And then in this case, it streams it back. So now you can imagine a workflow where somebody has some geometry, posts it up, waits for the HTTP service to give the data back, and away they go. Again, making it very, very easy to, uh, to do that. That's really what we focused on, is looking at common things users do and making it easy. Users had to request... Um, uh, jobs and data so they would manually create them. We added scheduling to um, give some sort of automation but that wasn't really um, really enough and so what we've done in in FME 2012 is now we've added this whole idea of pushing data um, 
and through a notification service. So now with FME 2012, it's very easy to set up workflows um, where users would publish, you know, maybe an event happens, users would publish um, some data to a topic to signify that event, and then one or more operations can go to push data in a variety of ways to to users. So this is great because, um, um, you know, in a pull environment, it's up to the users to ask for things. Okay, do you have this data? Do you have this data? Or spend time looking around with push now, we can um, have the FME server push data which is of interest to users so they no longer have to look for it. The data they want is pushed directly to them. Okay, so so let's look at a metaphor here to help us understand what's going on and um, we're going to use the bat signal here. Um, somebody tweeted that the bat signal was the world's first cloud-based uh, notification uh, service so I thought hey this is a great metaphor to use here. So so you can imagine um, the, you know you have the bat signal and um, and the bat signal is one um, type of topic that um, in the notion of FME server. So, so what happens with the bat signal is somebody goes and turns on the bat signal, i.e., publishes um, to the bat signal topic. And when bat Batman gets that, sees that, a variety of of, of things happen. Um, he, you know, he'll race off to to solve uh, the crime. The butler might do something to get him ready, and uh, maybe the Joker sees that and he knows he can do a, a, his own crime someplace else. So there's lots of different things that can can go on. But the important thing is, is that the the there's a separation there between the person who turns on the bat signal and what and all the actions that happen. And that's exactly what we've done for FME Server. Um, we have there's two two halves to it. In the first half, somebody publishes to a topic, um, and not even really concerned with what happens once that publish happens. Their job is just to publish to the topic when a particular event happens and then they forget about it. On the back end side, when that publish to the topic happens, a bunch of jobs can be configured to do a variety of things to um, react to that signal of somebody publishing to a topic. So. Um, each signal, the bat signal, for example, there's always a topic. So in a notification server, there's a, you know a signal is two things: a topic to identify the type of signal. So it could be traffic accident, could be fire, could be whatever you want, and users are able to make up their own. And of course, the contents it gives the specifics about um, where that traffic accident was, or in the case of Batman here. Um, where the crime is, what type of vehicle he might need to to fight um, the baddie that he's that he's after. Okay, so if you look at this NFME server, it's very simple. Um, again, we have this separation. One user publishes to the server, and they forget about it. Now that they've published, a variety of actions can happen. Okay, and out of the box, we could schedule a task to run later. We can run another FME workspace. You know, that could do a twi tweet. We can send email. We can trigger other web applications, or we could trigger SMS. Things like that. Those are some of the actions that can can happen. Of course, since one of them is running an FME task, you're able to do, um, you know, everything that 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 FME can do. And of course, you can have multiples of these for a single event. There's no limit to the number of actions that can be taken to one event um, okay so that's really really exciting okay so so how can the signal be generated um, again we looked at it and said we want um, users or applications to be generate or publish to the generate the bat signal or generate publish to a topic as easily as possible so one of course is any FME workspace um, run on a server or desktop can trigger this Okay, a scheduled task. You could have a scheduled FME task that runs just to check for events, um, and you know, run through a bunch of data, verify if the conditions are met, and if they are, then you can publish to a topic and have a whole bunch of of other things happen. Okay, any web web application. So, for example, um, we've built some scenarios with Amazon Simple Notification Service, where if somebody publishes to a topic on Amazon SNS, it can turn around and publish to an FME server, an FME server will do the job. Um, any web application, and of course, um, sensors. There's just a ton of sensors out there, um, and many of them have um, URL post capability. So now what we can do is we can um, consume the data from those sensors, um, you know, providing really exciting real-time transformation capabilities. Okay, and of course we have a REST API, and the REST API can also be used to trigger um, this whole publishing to an event topic, and then 
the the um, the data push being triggered via that. So there you go. Okay. So so what does it all mean? Um, well, there's sensor data everywhere. Sensors are just coming online like crazy, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, you know ab about sensors for a minute as one type of real-time data source. Okay. So there you go. So. Um, so if you, we start to, you know, if you go on the internet and you start looking around for sensors, you're going to see a whole bunch of different uh, sources for sensors. So one of the um, devices that a lot of us have is, is the iPhone. So, for example, on the iPhone, we have lots of sensors. So here's um, just doing, a, you know, looking at O'Reilly alone. There's a bunch of stuff on um, the iPhone sensors and how to work with them and things like that. So, so that's very exciting. Okay, if you go to uh, Patchby and um, if you listen to a follow-on video that's at the end of this deck, you will see where, where I give a demonstration of how to configure a sensor from this site to fme server and consume the data so this is a really exciting site what this is you can think of this as a sensor portal where people with sensors register it with patch b and then um, you can simply consume data data from that so that's another um, place where you can easily find sensor data okay there's an article here that talks about um, all the ways that um, new iphones of the future are going to have just amazing numbers of uh, of sensors so um, it's just going to basically uh, change the way um, you, you know we view health for example you can have an you'll have an iPhone watch or something that'll watch your heartbeat perspiration it'll actually be able to tell you when you're sick monitor your heart maybe you're you know there's some heart condition that hasn't been detected again huge huge benefits that we're gonna see here there's also sensors for the home so here you go this is something called green goose and um, you can learn more you can buy it and for 99 bucks or 50 bucks you can basically start putting sensors all over your house and um, you know you can do things crazy things like measure when your kids brush their teeth so again wow the world of sensors is um, is um, gonna be all around us and because there's always more than one here's another one um, something called twine which again a little tiny sensor you can see it there next to a pencil to give you an idea of the size all the um, sensors they have on it and of course again one of the ways that you can work with it is through an HTTP request ie post and so FME server um, is going to be able to consume data from all these different types of sensors so this is um, very exciting stuff okay so um, or you know you can build your own um, here's a site here where um, basically you can build your own sensors and in fact many of the uh, sensors that you're gonna find on patch B were built by by hobbyists using this technology so this is very exciting um, as well by uh, this open source hardware platform of software where you can build your own sensors and other um, interesting interesting gadgets so that's um, basically uh, what we've done for FME Server 2012. Again, the thing we focused on is two basic things. First, we focused on um, um, being able to integrate data, process data, making it really easy to integrate into web applications. And secondly, this whole notification thing, being able to uh, consume data from real world, real time sources. So, so there you go. There's a URL if you want to watch the video that uh, demonstrates, walks through an entire demonstration on. Uh, from a sensor that we discover to being able to process the data from it. So very, very simple with FME Server 2012. Um, if you have any questions, please do email me. There's my email address there. We're always looking forward to hearing um, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and ideas on, on where we can take this in the future. Of course, check out our website or uh, contact uh, your local representative. But anyways, um, do keep us posted on what you find with this FME Server 2012 and the ways we've improved it for integration as well as uh, the whole notification side of things. Thank you very much.